many of you have seen this clip before? Awesome. Great. So I remember when I was a kid, and I used to watch cartoons and movies and TV shows, I would see some scenes where someone could do things with their minds. I remember some scenes from like X-Men and Magneto, and I was amazed by the thought of thought controlling things or mind controlling things. And to this day, I'm still fascinated. And when that happens in my, in my favorite show, Stranger Things, uh, that even gets me more excited. And this is a very interesting time for neurotechnology and brain-computer interfaces. Last year, Facebook uh, Building 8 announced that they are launching a, a project or uh, doing some research about the human brain and how they can advance the communication between humans and computers. Because we can only be as efficient as we can type these days, or use the mouse, or even lately, voice UI. But imagine a world where you could just think about the outcome and it would just happen, right? Think about the code or a feature or a function and you output it as soon as you possibly can, right? Without having to type. Elon Musk is also, also announced last year uh, his new company, Neuralink, because we're at that point in technology where we need to make a change in order to optimize the way we interact with computers. And while some of these methods from Facebook and Elon Musk uh, might be invasive, meaning having chips and implants, um, there are ways that we can access brain data these days in a non-invasive way. This, this technology actually has been around for a while. It's actually almost 100 years old. My name is Alex Castillo. I build software to understand human behavior, and I'm super passionate about the brain and the web. And I spend all my free time combining these two. And that has been my fun project, my personal project for the last few years, until recently, uh, when I decided to leave Netflix a couple of weeks back to be able to pursue this full time, because I think what can happen in this field and with the technology, the technology that we have available is just amazing. Welcome to my talk. We're going to be talking about mind controlling the web. And I'm very excited to show you about some of the experiments I have created in the last few years. But before, I want to really give you a little bit of a flashback or some information about how this started. The gentleman that you see right here, Hans Berger, is the creator of the technology that powers these devices called EEG. It stands for electroencephalogram. And you might have seen it in uh, hospitals where they capture the brain activity and in most sci-fi movies as well. But the story about how he came up with that and why is just mind-blowing. No pun intended. So, turns out he was in the military and he had a near-death experience when he fell off his horse uh, in front of a, an artillery cart and was almost run off. That freaked the hell out of him. And when he came back to, um, when, when he came, came, came back, he received a telegram from his father saying that his sister had some type of premonition or a, or a feeling that he might have been in danger exactly at the time where the incident happened. And he, on his pursuit to find out how brain waves or well, there weren't really brain waves back until then, but how this mind could interact from long distances could happen, he came up with this amazing technology. So the brain is an amazing organ. It runs at about 20 watts, and it has hundreds of billions of um, neurons. 
And when these neurons start communicating with each other, they produce electrical signals in the forms of voltage. And when a big network of thousands, let's say, start activating, this can be actually sent from the scalp of the head using something called electrodes. And this voltage is actually the data that we're getting exactly from these brain-computer interfaces. My goal is to bring the brain to the browser. And that involves working with EEG, EEG data. EEG data on its raw form can look something like this. You're going to get a line for each one of the sensors placed in the head. In this example, we have around five. And you might have seen before that it goes up and down, and that pretty much describes the voltage, whether it's positive or negative, through time. So this type of chart is called a time series. But we can also interpret brain waves as uh, frequencies, the same way music can be uh, interpreted as frequency and waves. This is why they give the, the name of brain waves. And something very interesting happened and have been found through research that different frequency ranges or frequency bands map directly to somehow some cognitive states at the very, very high level. And you can get from very active thinking to some type of attention to relaxed state to drowsiness and then to actual sleep. And as you can see, the more passive your brain is, the more voltage it produces and the slower the waves are, which is the completely opposite of very active thinking. But I think this alone right now, I think there's so much that you can do with this when it comes to experiments. And when I found out about something called neurofeedback, I was blown away. Because neurofeedback is showing ourselves the brain waves. And when we're seeing the brain waves, we can see how our brain interprets it, and we can actually change the brain waves because now we are conscious about them. That's why it says making the preconscious available to the conscious mind. Because it turns out when you tell the brain exactly how it works, it can use that information to change itself. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's kind of like the movie Inception. So this would be a good example. Um, and in this example, I'm using the web browser because that's the environment that we're going to be uh, exploring today. But we feed a visual brainwave to the brain, and the brain receives that, and it changes back, and it's a constant cycle. It's, it's a feedback loop. That's why it's called neurofeedback. So I want to have a neurofeedback. I want to conduct a neurofeedback experiment today. That's apparently my emoji. Uh, not converting properly, but what I'm intending to show there is a warning sign, because I am going to need one of you as a volunteer to sit with me, uh, and we're going to be reading their mind. So please raise your hand if you're totally okay with doing this. You look very eager. Yes, please come over here. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Please take a seat. So we're going to be placing this uh, one channel, brain computer interface, and we're going to be reading your mind. And uh, just make sure you have clean thoughts, nothing dirty, you know, like we're in a respect the code of conduct. It applies to the brain waves, so. Yeah, yeah, there is something. There is something? <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, we'll, t we'll, we'll take a risk. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to place it right here. It's going to touch your forehead. And then I'm going to plug in the reference electrode. And uh, you're pretty much good to go. You have a very good head size. <laughs> I cannot say the same thing about a lot of people. Um, great. So this experiment, you remember when I show you Eleven crushing the can, the, the Coke can? Yeah. You're going to be doing that today. <laughs> Fair enough, right? So what I'm going to need you is to uh, point your chair. I know, because it's in the browser. I'm going to need you to uh, please move your chair so you can see the projector. Or if you want to see this one here, which is closer, yeah, yeah, please come here. Yeah, awesome. 
So um, this is my surprise announcement. Um, and this is something I call Stranger EEG. And uh, let's just give it a try, huh? So I'm going to run uh, quickly uh, the code that is going to receive the signal and send it to the browser. And then I'm going to come here. Yeah. And you're going to start seeing a percentage of your concentration down here. Right now it's at zero. Give it some time for the headset to get your signals and start uh, processing some of the eSense algorithms. But your goal is to get your concentration level past 70%. If you do that, you can guess what's going to happen. Oh, didn't run. <laughs> All right. All right, uh, we're getting some signal. There you go. One to 30. Oh, 54. Oops. Huh. So what we have here is the time series that I told you about. Then we have the concentration level from 0 to 100. And I liked it that you dented a little bit. But I actually want to see the full thing. All right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to restart this, and I'm going to see if you can do the full thing. All right. Can you this time crush the can like Eleven did? The neurofeedback is that you are seeing your concentration, and by knowing the concentration, you're figuring out what brain, what neurons you have to activate to get that higher, right? Give it up for him. Well done. That was awesome. Great. You crushed it. You, you crushed it. Uh, now go try with a Coca Cola can. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, is, is, is your nose okay? Are, are, are you bleeding? Are, are, are you good? All right, good. Yeah. Good. So that was a, a very, um, very explicit examples of neurofeedback. You're showing from the vision, you're capturing your brain waves so you can change them. And we're doing this directly in the browser wirelessly with a Bluetooth device. So let's just break this down and see how it works, right? So of course, we need a brain. Thank you. Uh, then we have the brain computer interface. This is a uh, Mind wave by NeuroSky, so one channel consumer EEG. Um, it, it's pretty easy to, to work and to get started and to prototype and to do things that are not like research grade. Uh, it's great to have fun with. Then we're using Node. And uh, in Node, what you have to do to get data, you can imagine how, how difficult this can be. We have around four lines of code that we have to write letter by letter. And if you get the create client function from the node thing gear sockets, which is a node library, uh, you can uh, create a mind from the client. You can connect the mind. And you can uh, listen to the mind data event listener. And this will just pretty much get you the data printed in the console. And if you want to get this to the browser so we can actually work with neurotech experiments in the browser, also very difficult. It's like you have to write like a few more lines. You use socket IO, and then you can just emit the event uh, to the browser. This is all the node code that I'm using for this example. So you can see how actually you know, simple it is to get started with just getting data 
so you can do something with it. Now I'm going to show you some uh, bits of the UI. This is a simplified example, but as you can see here, we're using some Angular. Um, the reason why I choose Angular for this uh, is because I love how you can bind to the DOM directly the data and use the observer pattern or observables um, to manipulate the DOM directly. And this is something that I do a lot. So this is the, a great fit. This is where Angular really shines. So we have some components that I won't get too deep into. But the time series is the line that you could see in time. Behind the scenes, this is a canvas. We have a bar chart that we pass a value. You, we pass a concentration level, of course. That is how we could see the concentration level. Actually, the bar chart is just an HTML5 progress bar that has a value uh, assigned to it, and the rest is CSS. Pretty, pretty straightforward. It's like one line of HTML, several lines of CSS, and you're all good to go. Lastly, the, the actual Coke can is a video that we are setting to autoplay false because we want to control exactly when the video is supposed to play. And we have a local variable here, video player, so from the JavaScript side of things, we can reference our element. So pretty straightforward on the semantic side of things. Let's see uh, the actual properties attached to the app component class. One of the most important parts is the concentration. Um, if we use the from event function from RxJS, which is just pretty much a way, a fancy way to use observables and get socket events, just like we use with callbacks, but as an observable, uh, we listen to the same uh, event name, which is the metric slash EEG frequency, and we pipe. Uh, and when I say we pipe, we pass some functions that you might be familiar with that also come from the RxJS library that work very similarly to you know, filter, uh, map, reduce from the array prototype. In this case, we're mapping and we're plucking and getting the attention uh, from the data that we're getting, and we're just initializing our value with zero. So it always starts at zero. That's everything we have to do for the concentration part to just um, um, visualize uh, the level. And then this is, I guess, the more um, tricky tr tr trickier part, which is uh, detecting the mental command. And to put it simply, we're just going to be filtering the concentration that goes over a threshold. I made it 70 per for you because I know you could do it. 50 is for me because you know I'm not that good. Um, but pretty much, this is going to fire each time the concentration is over 50%. Uh, but we're only taking the first one, as you can see here. And then tapping is adding a side effect, which is just going to make the video player play. Remember that video player local variable? Yeah, that's exactly how we can use it here. Ultimately, we subscribe and we're good to go. So that was the Stranger EEG thing. Stranger EEG. <laughs> um, and I want to show you a very simple demo of all the things that I've done to experiment with neurofeedback. This is same principle, but we're using a flower. And based on the meditation level, the flower can bloom or can become more of a stud. So the more you meditate and the more you relax, the more you can control the flower. And since you can see the progress of the flower, you can eventually figure it out, just like you did with concentration. Another example of your feedback. Um, I wrote a very detailed blog post with every single line that I wrote for this um, example. I've talked about it before, but uh, if you're more interested in, in the technical details, you can just go and check it out in my blog. Oh, and this is my favorite part. This is mostly for fun. I knew everyone was like going to like this. Uh, this is the first time I'm doing this. I actually finished it recently. And we're going to go from the brain to the brain-computer interface to Node and the drone. So I'm not going to show you the live demo. I'm going to show you a video. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> when I did this, the drone flew into me and scratch my hand and my arm. And I was like, how can you be so dumb? Like, you did this to yourself. Your brain made it happen. So can you really blame technology? 
Now, without further ado, let's just check out um, what happened um, the, when I tried to do this. All right, that was it. <laughs> that was uh, super exciting uh, for me. I was like, what? Um, so seriously, don't try it at home unless you have like full protection. Uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So you'll have the scratches somewhere here. Um, let's, let's check this, this out. Let's just see what I did. I'm going to show you some snippets of the code that I wrote. It's not rocket science. I warn you, this is just simple metrics of concentration uh, that I'm using to map to certain things like land, uh, turn, um, turn, turn around a certain threshold. So this is just like very simple just to have fun, just to try to use a little bit of data to kind of like hint the drone what to do, right? It's not that I can just see the area that I want the drone to be and it will go there. We're not there yet, maybe very soon or maybe just yet, but uh, at least uh, I, I don't have the time to really uh, dedicate myself to just flying drones uh, for a long time. So this is what it takes to uh, uh, access a drone. And I have a very small mini Parrot. Um, and there's a library called Parrot Mini Drone, of course. And you can just create a new instance uh, that auto-connects. And the max altitude was actually very important. If you don't set the max altitude, it's going to hit your ceiling. You want to keep it low. <laughs> Right? You want to make sure that you have a maximum for you know, meters, unless you're like outdoors. But you also want to be experimenting with like low altitude, so because it's going to come crashing a lot. So that's the drone part. The BCI, you've seen this before, right? Pretty simple. And then and a, simple, a simple command that I use meditation, patch 25%. If the drone is not flying, it's gonna take it. It's gonna make it take off. Very simple as that, right? Just a few lines of JavaScript. We're mapping the meditation, so we uh, get the meditation from the data, and then we're filtering that the meditation must be past a threshold. And then, if we tw tweak this a little bit, we can actually change the threshold to something higher, and we can start passing the data to a, a flight parameter like the yaw, which is what it's going to make it turn. So by doing this, it's going to start turning. That's why it took off, and then it started turning as I was able to elevate my meditation and relaxation levels so it could turn. You can start seeing how you can use meditation concentration uh, to start like making the drone go like back and forth. And maybe if you are good controlling your brain, which you can start like turning as well. Um, I would say that would be pretty uh, easy to do. And um, this is actually pretty cool because you actually get some blink data from this headset. And what I do is that when I blink really hard, it just takes a picture. Uh, so you can make the drone take a picture. And then you can download that picture if you connect to the drone. So it's say she's. Um, so I show you a very good example of how we can connect the brain to the browser. And talking about neurofeedback and mental health means that there are ways that we can use our skills from JavaScript to potentially in the future be able to create neurofeedback and neurotherapy to treat mental illnesses such as anxiety, panic attacks, alcoholism, depression, and so many other things. Because remember, if you show the brain what it's doing, you are giving the brain the opportunity to change it. And this is something that's been done. A lot of people are being able to get this treatment uh, with, of course, more um, uh, expensive gear and in a medical environment, uh, in a safe environment, to make sure you're tuning the brain correctly so we can overcome some of these things. So we're not there yet that we're just like controlling things crashing cans of coke other than the browser, but we can tune our brains and we can make it better, we can make it healthier. So this is something that I'm very passionate about and I think 
is really going to make a difference if we start using our skills to do something like this. You can get involved by going to neurotechx.com. Uh, it's an amazing, big and global neurotechnology community that is very friendly, very welcoming, and everyone is there to help. There's a Slack channel that you can join. I gave you so many examples in JavaScript of how you can do certain things. Um, and I have so many other examples on GitHub that I've published uh, through the years of things that you can do, from visualizing brainwaves, doing a little bit of neurofeedback, doing a little bit of flying the drone around just for fun. And getting it started these days is actually more accessible. Thanks to companies like OpenBCI. OpenBCI stands for Open Source Brain Computer Interface. And this company has made their mission to create an affordable, hackable brain computer interface that is both open source in hardware and software. Meaning that you can update the firmware of the headset yourself. You can print most of the parts of the headset and put together the board. It's very DIY very affordable, gives you amazing uh, quality of the data, uh, and that's actually how it got started. Uh, I want to thank Roma JS for hosting me yesterday and last night with some other commotion speakers. Uh, we had an awesome time. Uh, I get a chance to meet and see how strong the JavaScript community is here in Rome. Um, Benny, uh, honored to be here, so I want to just thank them and encourage you that if you don't know about them and you haven't uh, participated, that you should because uh, it was an amazing experience for me. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm going to leave this right here. Thank you very much for having me. And, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Is that Leo? Yes, I'm moving to this full time. Yeah. 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 So Leo is asking about what are the things you could do for consumers, like maybe meditation. And you're hitting right in, in the nail because there's already a company doing this. It's called Muse. Um, and Muse does neurofeedback to guide you during meditation. So they have a mobile app that you can connect to. They have a product that is a headband, very slick, very nice. Um, and you can, the app, while you're meditating, will let you know how good you're doing based on sound. So you close your eyes, it gives you audio feedback. I show you a lot of visual feedback. They give you audio feedback, and if you're going to a high meditation level, they play some birds. So you know exactly how to tune your brain with next to reach that level. When you do this long enough, you get good, and you're able to control and get to a meditation state faster. Um, and it has long-term effects. Um, that is why your feedback is so uh, effective. So yeah, that would be a great uh, use, which is actually ar already happening. There are other things some consumers are doing, also uh, um, based on attention. Some companies are targeting athletes for performance, so they can tune their brains, not just the physical aspect. And I think there's going to be more and more products coming out so people can actually learn more about what's going on inside their heads so they can be uh, accomplished more and, you know, change their minds. Great question. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Uh, you showed us the, um, that you are um, getting data from your device uh, using meditation, okay? That is one of the stuff that you can do with, with the brain. Yeah. What is the state of current technology? There are any ch chance to uh, get any other uh, information coming from the brain? You know, uh, meditation in is one of the stuff that you can do. But currently, what you uh, there are any other devices that can bring 
different kind of, of signals or what is the um, where they are going to yeah. uh, to go what is the evolution of these systems yeah um, there are certain brain computer interface protocols um, that have been established based on research and scientific papers one of my favorites um, it's called the p300 speller you are able via some uh, visual stimuli to uh, see or to choose certain letters. It's very slow. Uh, it's not more efficient than typing, but you are able, to, you know, someone paralyzed could communicate with a computer and spell slowly and, you know, be able to do basic commands. Another one is called SVEP. And based on different stimuli, uh, blinking at different rates, once you start focusing on one, what happens is that your brain waves actually start mimicking the patterns. So you know which option you're focusing, and people have been able to move wheelchairs with this, in, this approach. So those are a couple of protocols. There are a, a few more, but those are the ones that I like the most. So then, yes, you, you can actually do some practical things that can change people's lives. Yeah. Right, do we have time for one more? Hi. Um, I had the same question, but I wanted to ask you also another one. Uh, how about commercial user interfaces? Like you uh, signal the Skynet, the one that you use, then the open BIC. BCI, yeah. BCI. There, th is there any more advanced ones on yeah. the market? And what can you do with those ones? Yeah. So a little background is that traditionally these devices were more than $30,000. Um, this one in particular happens to be around 90 bucks, US dollars. And then you have everything in between. You still have some very expensive and high rate ones, high grade for medical uses, but then you have the middle, which is a very sweet spot. Um, there are some, for example, uh, a very good one is the Emotive, has 14 channels and you can do a lot with it. It's, it's uh, available uh, to consumers. Uh, the Muse is fewer channels, it's around four channels, but gives you a very good data. Uh, depending on what you want to do, but it's only from this part of the head. What is good about OpenBCI is that they have a couple of them. One uh, about four channels, one about eight channels, and then a shield that uh, extends to 16 channels. But you can position the electrodes wherever you want, so you can start using areas of the brain that you want to focus on. What can you achieve with the OpenBCI? What can you can achieve, you achieve with... Direction or yes, with OpenBCI, you, you can achieve... Uh, Focus, um, there are no open source libraries for focus and meditation yet. I'm working on that. But you can uh, achieve potentially SSVEP and P300. Um, yeah, it's my favorite. You can, you, can, you can do a lot with it. Tons of support. Again, this company is targeting these devices for people like us. And you can fully hack it, uh, and even researchers are using it. So if you want to get serious about it, you probably want to start there. That's how I started. Uh, time for one more, I, I think we're, yeah? All right, well, thank you guys so much.